Hello everyone and welcome to a sixth open dev talk on how to check if a vehicle is compatible with our auto API. So I will be sharing. So in today's edition, I will show you the importance uh, to check whether a car can be connected with our API. So here uh, we have a small illustration to start with. And uh, you can see here we have taken vehicles that are not uh, older than three years old. And uh, we have a very high rate of eligibility uh, for the following brands. So BMW, Mini, Mercedes-Benz, and also Ford. Uh, the importance of checking a car eligibility uh, is very relevant, for example, for the Stellantis brand. Uh, here we have sometimes the, the surprise of not having a car uh, being eligible uh, since the car is not necessarily equipped with the telematic unit. So this is why it's important to check the V so this check is VIN based. You will see, I will show you how to use it with a Peugeot, for instance. And uh, this is why we put this uh, endpoint, this API for you available. So you are able to integrate this check in your flow, in your processes or in your platform. Uh, so let's dive in. I will show you uh, the doc related documentation. So here's a small tip for you. So the starting point is, of course, our website, highmobility.com. And you don't necessarily need an account or to have registered. You can uh, check and access our documentation anytime. So if you scroll completely down, uh, here you have, uh, you even have our data uh, availability, our air table here. And this is the doc uh, I will be uh, showing you today. So the guide, uh, which is uh, very important, is the vehicle eligibility tutorial. If you go in there, uh, you will find the steps. But also something very important, uh, you also have the available brands for the check. And so this is uh, the, yeah, the, all the brands that are available today. The more brands we will offer for the data itself, the more we would also uh, make this uh, eligibility check available for it too in the future. Um, the something to note is that uh, you will be able to check the eligibility of a car for the brands that you have active on your side. So this is important to note. This um, eligibility endpoint is part of our service account endpoints. And so this is the... Uh, let's say the code I will be executing and using. So the idea of whenever you would need to use any available endpoint on uh, of our service account API, uh, in order to do that, you will need to pass in some uh, parameter. And for instance, here we will need a uh, NOS token. So this is the authorization bearer. And so first thing first, and this is here what is described uh, as first step, you will need to generate a GWT, an auth token. And this is pretty much the step we have done previously in our last open dev, where I show you how to use our clearance endpoints as well. So endpoints that are also part on our service account API. So I I've taken this code. You can also copy, easily copy it. And uh, this is pretty much a very 
um, quick a quick tutorial. Uh, the main idea is that we are following the same uh, steps as any endpoints that are part of our service account API. So if I go to the service account API tutorial itself, this is where you will find also the the, the steps. But most most importantly, the the code or some codes that you can uh, take uh, that you can uh, integrate in your own. Uh, you can uh, so the code I'm using to generate uh, AuthToken is uh, the one you can find on GitHub. It's the Node.js one. So this is createAuthToken.js, and this is how it looks like. Uh, so this I will uh, uh, be using it. I will show you uh, in the next step. As a prerequisite, in order to use any of our endpoints, you will need uh, um, I've, uh, uh, app container, sorry, a live app container, and you will need to have, of course, uh, the brand activated uh, that you are interested in. So this is pretty much uh, what I already have. So I will go on my team. So it's also important to work as a team on our platform. If I go to the live data tab, I will see uh, my app container, which is a status published. And um, these are some data points that are, that are chosen for testing purposes. But um, what you can see here, the brands that are active for me are the Stellantis one. That means that today I'm able to check or use this API for the Stellantis uh, car. Just uh, for you to to make sure uh, that you can you are aware of it. Um, so now that I uh, something to important to know, it might be that you have different use cases on your site that you might have different app containers. What I'm showing here is valid for one specific app container. So that's the idea. So in order to generate auth token, uh, I have uh, the, my file, which is the create auth token .js here. I hope it's big enough for you to see. So this is the code I will be executing to generate this auth token. And uh, the only thing you need to set are the API credentials. And as mentioned previously, this is then related to a specific app container. And this is where I can get this API, uh, this API configuration or the keys. Uh, this, I can get them from here. So now I will get a service API account key. You would only need to press plus to generate a new one. So you see, you it will it's it's downloading. So now I have a new uh, credentials. I have uh, my private key and a UUID. Uh, I will make this a bit bigger. Voila, perfect. Yes. So this is what I will need to replace in here. So I will take first the the key itself. So I'm copying between the codes, as you can see, begin private key and, and uh, private key. I will take it. I will put it in here. And next, I will take the UUID. Tuck, and here. So now my code is correct and it's ready to be used. So now I'm able to generate multiple auth token as much as I need. Uh, so now I will execute this uh, code. Uh, for that, I'm using the terminal on Mac. So this file, this create uh, auth token.js is uh, stored on my download folder. And now I uh, just uh, put node create auth token.js in order to execute this file. If I press enter, this is what you will get. You will get an auth token. So this is the, exactly what we need in order to use all the endpoints we have uh, available for you. 
and the eligibility API is the eligibility endpoint sorry is also one of them so now I have my token and it is uh, valid from a certain time and it's also expiring so this is why if you spontaneously are using the eligibility endpoint uh, you might need to regenerate some auth token or you you might also want to generate unique ones for security measures etc but um, as soon as my auth token is not expiring i can use it multiple times i can perform many checks etc so now I have copied my uh, auth token and uh, previously from the documentation, from the instructions, I taken the, the endpoint itself. I put it in, um, uh, let me check, in the text editor. Yes, this is the one. So this is the eligibility endpoint. Uh, I will need to pass in, as I mentioned previously, the auth token, so the one I just generated. Zach, that's done. And uh, I will then uh, mention uh, here the brand of the vehicle I want to check and its VIN. So this is pretty much what I already did done here. So this is a Peugeot and this is the VIN I will be checking now. Uh, now that my uh, auth token is, is valid, uh, it's also it's uh, generated and applicable to the specific app container. So now I will simply execute again this code in my terminal. So I'm doing now uh, everything a bit manually and quickly using the terminal. But of course, as you might uh, uh, know, you can include this code somewhere in, a, for example, a button in your platform that would uh, uh, check the VIN, uh, its eligibility with one click, etc. So you can easily onboard vehicles if you want. Uh, you can have a look into our last open dev to see how to use the endpoint, which enable you to add vehicle. So it means that you can use this endpoint to check its eligibility. And then eventually uh, uh, with another click and a press on the button, you can add this VIN to our uh, platform, our API to get uh, data. So that's be a good idea for you. So now I'm executing the code in my terminal and this is what I get. Uh, uh, let me maybe try to uh, pick her. It's, is, is it working? I will try to make it a bit bigger. Yes, that's better. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so this is uh, what I, I will I get. You have something interesting. You have also the data delivery. So you have here pull and push. It means that both uh, are compatible for this car. It means that you can get data from this car uh, using our REST API, but also, of course, you can use our push capability, uh, our MQTT, uh, you can stream even data. So we have added this information so you are no, you, you are, so you have the possibility to make sure that it's uh, uh, compatible with both method uh, on how to consume the data. And uh, here, this is the response that we are <laughs> willing to get, uh, which is eligible eligible equal true so that's perfect so this card is eligible and uh, if you like then you can use another endpoint in order to add this vehicle through clearance so that's uh, pretty much it as you can see it's uh, straightforward um, something to note is that um, this endpoint is meant to be used for uh, uh, individual VINs um, and also uh, as I mentioned previously today and with my app container that I have I can only check the brands that are activated for me that we would activate for you uh, so now I'm able to check Stellantis uh, vehicle brand 
if I would ask uh, as a customer high mobility to activate BMW or if you want uh, to get more brands in the weekend, of course, uh, activate them uh, within your app container. And so you are able to check the, the same uh, uh, ID here, the, the VINs uh, for uh, all the brands you have active. Um, so that's the idea of this endpoint. Um, same goes with uh, whether you have an app container for a B2C type of use case, or if you have an app container for B2B, the checks will also be uh, adapted uh, automatically for this type of uh, cars or this type of use case as well. Uh, this is uh, automatically, uh, uh, let's say, taken in consideration uh, uh, since it's related again to the app container itself so you don't need to bother you just need to use it uh, and put in parameter your VIN so that's the ID um, another aspect uh, so you can use this eligibility endpoint but uh, you also have some indications in our documentation uh, let me go back to it yes in our guides, you will also find some uh, clues and some uh, uh, information about which model are eligible as well. So um, for, for BMW, uh, all models produced after July 2017 should be compatible and eligible. So if you have exclusively BMW or mini vehicles in your fleet, there is not necessary, I would say, to implement the eligibility uh, endpoint uh, necessarily uh, because this rule applies. But uh, as I mentioned previously, if you go to the Stellantis guide, here you will have some more indication uh, on the which model of which a brand might be eligible. But it could be here interesting, and I think it's important uh, to point out that uh, the eligibility check itself is very reliable. Uh, but of course, uh, the model lists uh, this information is already giving a clue uh, whether your fleet uh, might be uh, compatible as well. But uh, yeah, that's something I wanted to note for today uh, for you. And uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, if you have a fleet of vehicles, a larger amount of VINs uh, you want to check, uh, this is something you can uh, ask us uh, for. Uh, you can provide us a VIN list and we are happy to make this check for you. We have uh, another way of doing this type of lookups. Uh, so if you have a larger amount of VINs, uh, we can do it for you. Uh, this is really meant, uh, this endpoint is meant to, to be used for individual ones or spontaneously within uh, your own process. And uh, yeah, that's um, pretty much it uh, in a nutshell for today. Um, thanks uh, a lot for attending and for your attention.